fire alarm. A fire detection system consists mainly into a fire detector, a fire control panel, and a siren. The fire detectors can be by several types and I'm talking about the optical detector and ionization detector. The optical detector works by transmitting a beam of light uh, into a photodiode light receptor and if the light scatters through the smoke particles the light uh, enters the receptor and we have a fire alarm. The ionization detector, on the other hand, works with a radioactive source which ionizes the air between two plates. And uh, if we have a uh, smoke between those two elements, a small electric current appears and we have a fire alarm. The detector I'm going to use has uh, four pegs, uh, which uh, the peg two and three are short circuit uh, inside and I explain why in a little bit and we can see that the peg number one is lamp out that meaning uh, that I'm going to use this uh, pin as a alarm pin this is a traditional wiring of a fire detection panel and you can see that all the detectors are in parallel and if one of them detects the smoke then the current changes in the circuit and uh, the panel triggers the alarm this is how you can connect a signaling lamp to show you which detector entered the alarm you you can see that um, the short circuit inside the detector is used for the fire control panel to detect a fault. If you remove, let's say, a detector to be able to smoke in the room or in the lavatory, then you will trigger a fault in the fire detection panel. This is the row design that I want to start with to make a small uh, fire detection system. And I want to, I plan to place a relay between the fire pin which triggers to the ground when in alarm to activate a siren. The thing is that unlike those uh, domestic detectors which reset when the smoke disappears, this uh, industrial or professional type of detectors do not reset themselves. They stay in alarm forever until the, you, the power is cut. So I need to insert a switch to cut the power and to reset the detector, thus stopping the alarm. Why am I saying this is because a few weeks ago I set my shed on fire because I threw in the garbage bin a piece of paper that I burned and it wasn't fully extinguished. When I came back sometimes later, my shack was full of black smoke from the melted plastic bucket and from this protection rubber mat. Fortunately, this rubber mat is fire retardant and there were no big flames, but uh, the walls and the ceiling and all the devices were covered in this black sieve. The fire is not a joke and I knew that and I still messed up and that can destroy thousands of euros worth of equipment in seconds. That's why I started to set up this fire alarm and there also I added a fire extinguisher. Though there are a lot of detector, smoke detectors available on the market for home use which are simple, reliable and standalone, I can't use one of these because well, placing it in my shack, uh, the siren inside this detector, the buzzer, will not be loud enough to be heard from inside the house. That's why I need an outside siren. This is my crate of detectors. I have all sorts of detectors here. That's a gas alarm detector. There's a smoke detector for a, a burglary alarm. It's a 12 volt detector. This is a double gas and carbon monoxide detector. That's my ionization detector that I want to use. It's made by a French company named Fare. French were pretty devo developed in uh, fire detection elements. And as you can see, it's a radioactive uh, element inside, Americu 241. That's another type of uh, ionization detector made by Cerberus. And that's how you open its tip to be able to do the maintenance, cleaning dust. And you can also see that's a radioactive element, Americu 241. Cerberus made in Switzerland. These are detectors discarded by former companies which uh, switched to optical detectors 
because a uh, radioactive detector is not dangerous in itself but when you put together few tens or hundreds of detectors when you ship them or when you take them down for maintenance that's when you have a problem with the radiation and with the radioactivity now I need to search through my stash of power supplies well even though there's a lot of stuff here a lot of power supplies I couldn't find anyone uh, suitable for my project which is 24 volts DC current I managed to find though this one which stands around for 15 years I guess and uh, it looks promising I have something to scavenge from it the good thing is that it outputs directly 25 volts which is great at a close inspection you can see that there is something valuable here to be reused which is uh, the transformer, a relay, a fuse holder, the screws terminal, this is the filtering capacitor and even a rectifying bridge Now that the power supply was taken care of, sort of, it was time to concentrate on the detector itself. And as the old saying go, don't install it, tear it apart. You can see here the radioactive pill. Near the alarm LED you can see a reed relay. This is used for maintenance. You don't want to smoke the client when testing the detectors. So the producer provided a um, reed contact to activate it with a magnet and thus triggering an alarm. This is for testing purposes. The entire PCB is covered in clear lacquer which is great for uh, stability and uh, resistance to elements. This is a test bench that I created uh, to see if the relay can be activated by the detector when in alarm. This is me rubbing the magnet against the detector to put it in alarm, but the experiment in the end was a failure. There is uh, not enough current to draw directly the relay. I need to design a circuit. Because the alarm pin activates by uh, put it to negative I need to use a PNP transistor so the alarm pin uh, drives the base via a 1 kilo ohm resistor and in collector I have the relay with a reverse protection current diode that's the switch for the reset circuit and I plan to put an LED to to signal the power
The transistor of choice is a BC327, which I happen to have on stock. The circuit is very simple, so I assemble everything. This is the power cord and this simulates the reset switch. And measuring the line, which is the output, I have 23 volts, unregulated, because, of course, not that rubbish regulated one. But to my surprise, I also have the output activated. So the relay is engaged even though I have anything on the input. Why is that? Back to the drawing board, the circuit seemed to be okay, but the transistor is burned. Of course that looking back at the circuit this is what happened. When the alarm pin went to the ground the supply voltage of 24 volts went across the emitter base junction. The 1 kilo ohm uh, voltage drop resistor is not in, is insignificant so the junction was destroyed because it can only support 5 volts. So the circuit is alright for 5 volt switching but not for 25 volts. It was time to cut the crap and approach the problem more scientifically. So I stripped all the goodies from the old board and made this breadboard to do the experiment. I searched another tra for another transistor in my, uh, in my parts stash and uh, setting my power supply to 24 volts and only 100 milliamperes maximum current, I tested the board with this potentiometer to determine exactly where the transistor switches and enters the conduction. I'm measuring the voltage across the relay and adjusting the potentiometer until the relay is energized. There's the spot right there. The only thing remained to do is to measure the value of the potentiometer and the position of the collector. Since it is a 1 kilo ohm potentiometer, it is easy to find out the ratio. This is the circuit and this is how it works. I connected the base of the transistor to the collector of a potentiometer and the potentiometer's end uh, are hooked to plus uh, 24 volts and zero. I simulated basically the alarm pin in alarm and thus hooked to zero. I started with the potentiometer's position close to plus 24 volts, thus uh, inducing a emitter base voltage to zero. And slowly rotating the potentiometer, remember the alarm pin is in alarm, so rotating slowly the potentiometer until the emitter base voltage is more than 0.6 volts the conduction threshold and the transistor enters the conduction, the relay engages. Basically these uh, two resistor values are the correct resist resistor values where the transistor enters conduction, works normally and reliably. So this is the correct schematic with the voltage divider of the alarm pin in the base of the transistor. So this is the final construction. You can hear the relay clicking when I simulate the alarm. Beautiful.
A fire alarm bell is traditionally red, so let's paint it red. This is plastic, but I sand it a little bit to make the paint adhere better. That's the little hammer. I'm going to put it back in here. Let's degrease everything with alcohol. This is a real fire retardant cable for fire detection systems. Not that it matters, but since I got it, here's how it looks like. An aluminum foil, another plastic protection, and this one has four wires and a ground wire.
So there you have it folks, a fire detection system which is very simple, reliable and most of all extremely useful. Thanks for watching.